This month we're looking at Adobe Captivate once more and we will be exploring its very powerful yet simple to use quiz feature. Now in order to set up a quiz in Captivate we need to follow a few steps and the first step would be to set up a quiz's preferences. Now in order to do that we need to inform Captivate of the fact that we want to produce a quiz inside this project and also set up what would constitute completion or incompletion of that project as well as a pass or a fail. Now if you're familiar with working with LMSs you may want to also set up reporting for that quiz. So using the Captivate Preferences window and going to the quiz section we'd simply set up the reporting if that would be required and um, set up the actual quiz's preferences and what would constitute a pass or fail and then continue into the menus under the quiz menu to set up the actual quiz slides and questions. So let's begin with setting up the reporting. Now if I just enable reporting for this project, notice that I can choose from a number of learning management systems um, from the pop-down menu, but if the learning management system that I'm using does not actually conform with one of these in the list, I could use a standard LMS um, framework because Captivate projects are actually standards compliant which means that all of the learning material that is recorded and captured and output is actually SCORM and AICC compliant meaning that the content that I create in Captivate would basically be usable in all standard LMS's. So I'll just stick to standard LMS and then I would choose what would constitute uh, completion or success of this project because LMS would need to record and report that the user basically successfully completed this project. So if I'm only happy with them accessing the content then I could set that up as completion criteria but perhaps I need them to be a little more involved with the content so I'd say well actually viewing the slides and or the quiz is actually going to um, meet the completion criteria so just the fact that they open and close the project is not enough for the LMS to report that they successfully used that content so I'm going to set up they must view all slides and pass the quiz so I'm being a bit strict but in a learning environment perhaps that's what you need so once I've set that up I would then also determine how the quiz score should be reported back to the LMS and in this case I'm going to say please report the score as a percentage um, and also give me all interaction data which means I want to know where the person clicked, where they didn't click and what their progress was through that content. So the quiz preferences under reporting would basically be where I'd set up my Captivate project to talk to my LMS or my learning management system in order to track that user's progress throughout that content. Once I've done that I would then go to the quiz settings itself. So there I would enter in the name of the quiz and basically fill in all the details that are required for that quiz to be plugged into my LMS in order for it to be uh, recorded and tracked. But that I'll leave for another, another day. What we will do however is tell Captivate to shuffle the answers so that you know learners don't tell other learners what the answers to the questions are, which can happen. Um, and I'm going to do that for all question types that do allow answer shuffling. And something that's really, really interesting here is setting up something called branch awareness. Now, if you want the, the learner to be able to reroute back to content that, um, that may need a, a, a second look at, for example, they've been asked a question in a quiz and they're unsure of the, of the question's answer, and after three or four attempts, Captivate would actually be set up to reroute them back to the content where they could revise the content and then continue with the quiz where they left off. Um, this would be quite a useful feature um, in remediation. So if somebody is having a problem with the question, they could be rerouted back to the, the content, have a look at it again, then attempt a question um, a second or third time. So with branch awareness on, that will basically enable the, the learner to take a detour from the questions 
but return to the last question that was, was attempted and continue from there. Also in the quiz we can allow the, the user's progress to be shown so they'd know how far they are through the, through the quiz. And if we wanted to, we could allow them to go back in the quiz and revise their answers. Sometimes that's not recommended and other times it is. It just depends on the kind of quiz that you're actually putting together. So whether or not you want the back button included in the quiz is up to you. Now this is quite an important feature too, which is to show the score at the end of the quiz. And this, I think, is important for the users to see how well they've done or not. And if they want to review the quiz, they can go back and look at what the correct answers were. Um, so I'm enabling both of those in my quiz. And last but not least is um, allowing the play bar to um, show in the quiz is entirely up to you. Um, notice that, that when I enable that, then basically the play bar would be hidden in the quiz. So as the, the user is going through the questions, they would need to answer the questions correctly to, in order to continue to the next question. Should they get that answer incorrect, they would then be exited out of the quiz or they'd need to keep attempting it until their attempts ran out in, in getting that answer right. If the play bar is hidden, they can't skip any questions. So the play bar that comes with the, the player um, in, in the final output format would be hidden. Next up, looking under quiz, the pass or fail settings. What would constitute a pass or what, what would constitute a fail? And what would happen if they passed or failed? So under pass or fail, you could type in a percentage, which would allow them to pass, or a number of points out of the total. So if I said I'm happy with 80% being a pass rate, then if they passed, I could set up what would happen if they passed. So for example, let's say they've worked on, on chapter one of a learning interaction, they've passed the quiz successfully or with flying colors and they then progress to chapter two. So I could say go to the next slide um, or go to a website where the next chapter is actually ready for download or open another project where the next chapter is sitting. I might even want to send an email to their lecturers or um, to, to whoever, informing them of their results, or I could execute quite advanced actions around that. So depending on what you have planned or how you've basically sequenced the learning interactions, you could set up that they could continue to the next learning material or the next quiz based on their success um, of, on this quiz. If they fail, something else can be set up. So if they fail, we would basically have to um, determine how many times they can fail, either infinitely and just allow them to keep retaking the test until they pass or until they give up. Um, or we could say, let's give them, say, three attempts. Um, and if they fail after three attempts, what would happen then? So again, with an action, we could say, after three attempts of passing the quiz, we would then... Um, if they had failed, we would then jump them to a slide that would reroute them back to the beginning of that content, where they'd have to revise the content before taking the quiz again, and perhaps simultaneously sending an email to their teachers informing the teacher or lecturer that, they've, that they haven't successfully completed the, the quiz um, on the initial attempts. So quite a nice way here to, to actually set up what happens should the student pass or fail um, in that quiz environment. Once we've set up the preferences, we would basically say OK, and then continue to the, the project where we would set up the actual quiz slides. Notice before I do that, however, that at the end of my project, we have now said, we hope you enjoyed the course. Please take the quiz to test your knowledge. I could now go and search through my content where my quiz results has been inserted, and I'll just move that down to the end of the project. And basically between my introduction of the quiz and where the quiz results will be showing, I'm now going to insert my question slides and that I will do in the next tutorial.